back to my shop. Uh, I'm getting ready to do a hands-on workshop uh, next week with my my club on making these uh, small goblets with a captive ring. So I thought it's been several years since I've made ones. I thought I better practice. So I thought you might be interested in watching. So stay tuned. I'm going to use my normal 50 millimeter jaws. That's better. All right. Now let's go ahead and turn it around. So let me go ahead and mark that uh, the base of that cup. It's going to be right here. And I'm going to go ahead and use a parting tool to mark mark that. Just a little bit. The key on a goblet because it's going to get kind of spindly uh, and strung out here, you want to keep as much mass toward the, the tailstock as possible. I mean, the head headstock. Uh, a larger piece of wood for a smaller goblet would have been a great idea, but uh, this is what I'm going to, to use. I'm just going to start shaping the, the base. Anchor the tool. Lift the handle to the cut. Tape of the front just a little bit. Put this here. I'm going to go ahead and use a skew. Kind of chamfer this a little bit. Now we're going to use a drill. Use my trusty hand drill, which I've got marked off with some file marks. Or actually, I used a Dremel cutoff wheel. It's too hard to, to file. So we're going to hollow it down to, looks like between here and here. And we're going to start hollowing this with a spindle gouge. And this is the part where you know, if you did a really long goblet, you'd have too much leverage here. Think of this as a hammer, and the longer the hammer, you know, the more leverage you're going to get. So we're going to go very slow and easy to hollow this out. Uh, but this is just standard end grain hollowing, cutting right on center with the flute of this spindle gouge marked at somewhere close to, uh, oh, somewhere close to 11 o'clock, 10, 30, 11. That is, if, if the, on a clock face, 12 is straight up. Uh, if the flute was completely closed to facing me that would be at 9 o'clock. We're going to do this at somewhere around the old 11, 1200 RPM. We're just going to pivot, just stick it in there and just... We're just going to take very small cuts, very fine shaving so I don't rip this wood right out of the scroll chuck. We're going to get just a little bit of chatter here, but that's all right. Everything I'm only cutting with a tip, so I'm not cutting out a lot of wood. You can see what the chips are. You can you can see that I'm 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 not taking really hefty cuts. The scouts could take bigger cuts, but I don't want to take a bigger cut. All right, now it's time to investigate whether I've gotten down to the bottom of the hole. No, I've got just a little bit more to go. And now it's round at the bottom. Now, we've just about hollowed it out. Um, now we can start refining the shape a little bit. I really didn't face this off. I'm going to do that now. Just taking a, a little bit of a pull cut here.
Got the flute faced it almost closed about 11:30. Okay, now design consideration. I want this to be to close in a little bit. Uh, I've got plenty of wall thickness here to do that, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, do two things. I'm going to just do kind of a pull cut here, a little bit of a scrape on the inside to bring this to, to more of a knife edge to make it look thinner than it's actually going to be when I'm finished. You can see the very fine shavings I'm, I'm getting. Alright, now I'm going to come in from this side and I want to get it a little rounder looking from about two-thirds up on the, on the bowl. Okay, so I've got a nice little, little gentle slope there. Now, at this point in time, I, before I go any further, I probably ought to go ahead and sand this, the, the inside here. So I'm going to do that off, off camera. Then we're going to come back and start working our way down. And we'll bring up tailstock support uh, to support this. Before we sand, these walls are a little thick. I want to take that down a little bit. And I'm going to switch to a very small uh, half inch uh, scraper. It's a bit less than a quarter of an inch thick uh, with rounded edges. And I'm going to just pretty much go straight down right into that in, in grain. The speed back up again to about a thousand. Just again cutting right at on or slightly below center. I want to get stopped before I get too close to the bottom. I don't want to get this edge uh, too far in there where I'll cut it here and here at the same time. That's guaranteed to get a catch. So I'm going to go back in. I'm leaving this flat with a. I'm, this is coming in perfectly uh, flat. Maybe the handle is up just a little bit. And I'm going to come in, just feel my way to the bottom. Slightly twist it over to the left and then come in off the bottom. Kind of blend those two. Just round one here and just kind of. Go ahead and figure out how to bring up some tail uh, tailstock support. There's uh, several ways to to do this. One is I can use uh, just use a center and put something in there that will pad this to kind of keep it in in place and provide some some support, like a large piece of uh, okay. And I think that'll provide all the support I need. I notice Mike Walt uses a tennis ball. I could do that, but I'd have to steal one from my dog, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and use a parting tool. Just come down here a little bit. to my tiny little 3 8 inch bowl gouge just to be does this a little bit faster. Alright, we're going to put a little bit of a, a detail down here at the bottom, kind of a, a cove and then, then that little fixture, so it's Let's do that first. There's that little detail. Now I'll start cutting it down from below the base of 
this cove start taking away so I've got to start wasting some wood okay now I need to finish getting this round and tapered down I marked a couple of places here that'll disappear and I'll have to remark them but the first thing I want to do is I want to mark the bottom of this uh, of this goblet so I'll know where to shape from. So I'm just going to come in here with a parting tool. Not go too deep, because I don't want to remove the integrity of having as much down mass down here as possible. Now again, I'm going to use that small uh, bowl gouge, and I'm just going to, from this mark right here, I'm going to waste it down. Now I could probably do about as well with a half inch uh, spindle gouge. I'll switch to something a little smaller, but right now I'm just kind of wasting wood. Now before I go too much further here, I'm going to make a captive ring. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the parting tool and I'm going to part on each side of where that ring is going to be. Get on the side of the ring. Now I'm going to come out here about a quarter of an inch. Bring the part down to match this side right here. Now I'm going to just come in slightly here, just get a start, and give myself a little more room to work on the back side here. So I'm just going to go ahead and start taking this down a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and just round over the ring while I'm thinking about it. Now, I've got to figure out what tool do I want to come in there with. Let me do a little more room here on this side. To do that part, that captive ring cutting with. So I'm going to probably use a couple of different tools. Before I get too carried away, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, sand this nice and round in case I get... Uh, it's easy to get carried away and forget that if you don't sand it down, it's free you have a hard time sanding it so let's go ahead and do that now I'm going to use a uh, homemade uh, captive ring tool uh, it's got this profile on it and this is for baby rattle so it's a little bit large for this but I'm going to use it anyway because I think it'll still cut in behind it so we're just going to lay it flat and just, just kind of work in the other side and just, just rotate it in. Now before I free it, I think I want to go ahead and take some some sandpaper and see if I can't get in there and clean this ring up just a little bit before it breaks, breaks loose. Let's make myself just a bit more room here. Get in a hurry. Now that I look at this, I want to. Uh, this one had spirals in it, but I'm not going to put spirals on it. I'm going to do a little bit different design. I've got one over here. Let me grab it. This one's a little bit larger. And I like this uh, bead with with these two long coves, so that's going to change this design a little bit. That's okay. Uh, I'm going to make that bead about one third of the way, and I'm not going to actually measure that. I'm just going to eyeball it. It's going to be one half of the ball. There's going to be one half of the ball. All right, all right. So we're going to go ahead and do some of that before we 
we finish this up. So I'm going to come in here from the left and just do a, do a cove on both sides. Come back here, do a cove. Right here, I'm going to mark a little deep cut for that ball. And then make one on this side. to bring this down here just a little bit, take it flat on both sides. Now I'm going to make that go, just scoop in, it's kind of like scooping ice cream. Look at that smaller detail gouge. I could make do with that one, but I'd feel more comfortable in this narrow space in here with this little tiny detail gouge. Keep that flute straight up when it goes down in there. Same thing on this side. I'm going to go ahead and sand this up, sand this up before we free that ring. Alright, I'm going to switch to a little different tool to part this off. Actually, it's what I'd call a cat's claw. It's made out of one quarter inch uh, high speed steel bar filed flat on both sides and sharpened. So the inside cuts a little bit and the tip cuts. We're going to keep this thing flat, maybe turn it down just a little bit. We'll just slowly cut in from both sides. tape it off while we finish this or just let it dance dance around it's not going to cause a problem so now we got to figure out how we're going to deal with the bottom and just kind of do a slope. Roll this thing over at 3 o'clock so I can get down in deep without interfering. Come back on this side, going deep. Okay. And now we're going to put this back just a bit. That's going to be the base. Now 
I think that looks looks good. I'm, I'm happy with that. Now we got just this little bit of a rough edge here on the inside. I don't know if y'all y'all can see that. So we need to come in there with some some sandpaper and knock those edges off. Now one way to do that is you can take sandpaper like this and tape it on each side. Matter of fact, I think we'll we'll probably go ahead and do that. Uh, so I need to put a little tape on each side. And then we're just going to do the same thing with the tape. We're going to put a little tape on each side. Kind of hold it in place a little bit. Speed it up. And we're just going to just turn this around like this by hand. Knock off those, those edges. Some of this we can just do it by hand like this. Okay, I shined the whole thing up with this uh, scratch-free EEE from... Uh, craft supply. Now we're going to use a little uh, hut crystal coat, a little uh, friction shellac finish or you could use OB shine juice but it's easier to do this while it's on the lathe. And this will make a nice finish. This is not going to get handled a lot. It's going to just probably wind up sitting on a shelf somewhere. So This friction Friction coat will be just fine. Not pressing very hard, just letting the speed and the friction do its work. Just keep it moving. And that's shining like a new penny. Let's uh, do one more coat. I'm getting a little thunder outside. I'm going to have to turn this lathe off pretty quick because I don't want to accidentally have a lightning strike come in and hit my variable frequency drive. That's an expensive part. So I don't always unplug it every day, but in the summertime I try to, anytime I hear that there's going to be thunderstorms, I unplug the lathe. Part this off. I'm going to use a thin parting tool. I'm going to back this off just a little bit. I'm going to use my fluted parting tool, which makes a really nice cut. And I'm going to put brace my underarm under. I'll just wait until it comes through, and then I'll grab it. There we go. And that's perfect. I've got a little bit of nub and no torn fiber, so I can cut that off and sand it very easily and sign my name on it. So there we go. Nice little uh, tiny little goblet with a with a bead on it. If you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you'll get a notification next time I release a video. Doesn't cost you cost you anything. Y'all stay safe and come back soon here.